Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. What's going on guys, this is Rob, and okay, every time I make a Beyond Omega level video, and I do mean like every time, I ask you guys who you wanna see me cover next, right? I always say that, like let me know in the comment section who you want me to cover next, and everybody, not really everybody, but like lots of you guys always respond with the same person. <laughs> Not even person, with the same character. So today, I'm granting your requests, and we are going to do a Beyond Omega level video on Shuma Gorath. So, who is Shuma Gorath? All right, for those of you guys who are fans of the Marvel vs. Capcom games, you already know that he's basically just like a, a giant one-eyed green octopus that was inexplicably included in several games in that series. But as for the comic book version, Shuma Gorath was created by Steve Englehart and Frank Bruner and debuted in Marvel Premiere number 5 in 1972. Now, as for his origin, Shuma Gorath has been around longer than the Marvel multiverse itself. He's basically a super ancient demonic entity belonging to a species known as the Mini Angled Ones. And essentially exist in the space between realities. Now, the goal of the many angled ones is to infiltrate and eventually conquer and corrupt realities until everything that exists within that reality is devoted to worshipping them. We actually saw that play out during the story of Thanos Imperative. If you've never actually seen it, check out the link in the description. Uh, it's really, really good. Anyway, among the many angled ones, Shumagorath is considered one of the most powerful, belonging to a subsect of the race known as the Old Gods, of which there are only four known members. Now, what we know about Shumagorath is somewhat limited, but we do know that he ventured to Earth millions of years ago and ruled over the entire planet, but was banished to a different dimension by a sorcerer from the 31st century named Seisneg, which is Genesis spelled backwards, uh, which is kind of weird. Anyway, he ends up traveling in time, collecting all the magical energy he can in hopes of reaching the beginning of all creation and remaking it in his image. In the process, Seisneg becomes nearly omnipotent, but the last thing Seisneg does before remaking the universe is to banish Shumogorath to another dimension, but he acknowledges that if he attacked Shumogorath directly, the old one would simply siphon off too much of his energy and he wouldn't be able to defeat him. And so seeing that Shumogorath was devouring all of the primates that existed on Earth at the time, Seisneg put Shumogorath in a deep sleep before sending him to a different dimension. Now Shumogorath would not remain in exile forever and he would actually return to Earth during the age of Conan the Barbarian, which makes sense because the name Shumogorath was actually lifted by Steve Englehart from a short story by Robert E. Howard, the creator of the entire Conan mythos. And so Marvel Comics actually published an ongoing Conan comic from 1970 to 1993 and toward the end of that run in 1991, it was revealed that Shumogorath had returned to Earth and had been imprisoned within a mountain by a shaman in the service of the deity Krom, and upon being released by a group of sorcerers, was banished from Earth by Conan using iron-bound magic texts. Now, the next time we see Shumogorath is when he's trying to get back to Earth via the mind of the Ancient One, and this is probably the instance that most of you guys are most familiar with when it comes to his character, but the Ancient One, as most of you guys probably know, was Doctor Strange's mentor in the Mystic Arts, one of the most prolific sorcerers in the Marvel Universe universe and the former Sorcerer Supreme of Earth. And so this takes place in the pages of Steve Englehart's run on Marvel Premiere when he first introduced the character of Shumogorath. And what we find out is that Shumogorath sought out the Ancient One because he was the preeminent force of good in all the cosmos. This made him basically the opposite of Shumogorath, who states that he comes from a dimension that is diametrically opposed to the main Marvel Universe, which essentially means that Shumogorath is the strongest force for evil in all of existence. Furthermore, Gorath tells Doctor Strange that the Ancient One knew that he would never be able to defeat him and reveals his plan to kill Stephen Strange and supplant every religion on Earth so that all will worship Shumogorath instead. And so with Earth conquered, Gorath would then move on to conquering the rest of the universe, something he could probably actually do. But remarking that Shumogorath is the most powerful foe that he's ever faced, Doctor Strange launches a desperate bid to prevent his return to Earth by shrinking himself down and entering the mind of the Ancient One. Now when he finds the ego of the Ancient One, Strange destroys it and in doing so, destroys his physical body as well, effectively killing him. Now, Strange remarks that killing the Ancient One is the only way to stop Shumogorath and states that the life of the Ancient One must be weighed against the life of everyone else in the universe, indicating that Stephen Strange believed that Shumogorath was capable of accomplishing his goal of conquering the entirety of reality itself. Now, following this, we've seen Gorath attempt to return to Earth several times, but he's typically repelled before he's actually able to do so. And this is what makes it difficult to really get a sense of how powerful Shumogorath is and why I've held off so long on doing a video on him. He's typically 
typically described as being nigh omnipotent and substantially more powerful than demons such as Mephisto, who it's said looks like a mouse in a great temple compared to Shumagorath. Unfortunately, however, we see Shumagorath being banished back to his home dimension before he's able to reach his true form, and therefore, he's unable to perform any of the feats that gives us a true picture of his power. Now, in terms of what his powers are, uh, Shumagorath seems to essentially be immortal, as he's existed for millions of years, and no matter how many times he appears to be vanquished, he always re-emerges. For instance, once Doctor Strange killed himself in the same fashion that he killed the Ancient One to prevent himself from transforming into Shumagorath. Of course, Strange was later resurrected from his fate, and Shumagorath was also reformed, because comics. He does seem to be close to omnipotence as well, as it's revealed during an encounter with Doctor Strange that Shumagorath is the ruler of hundreds of alternate dimensions. Now, one of the realities ruled by Shumagorath and the many angled ones, of course, is the Cancerverse, which was a near-perfect copy of Earth-616 until Marvel contracted cancer. Unlike the main Marvel Universe, where Marvel actually died of his cancer, in the Cancerverse, he accepted a bargain from the many angled ones that allowed them to destroy the abstract concept of Mistress Death and then corrupt that entire universe itself. Now, Shumagorath is capable of reality manipulation, having created a perfect replica of Earth and was able to use it as a voodoo doll of sorts for the real Earth, surrounding it with a band of flames which could be felt on Earth itself. He can travel across dimensional and physical barriers, manipulate matter, and take on any shape he desires. He can drain energy from his surroundings and his opponents, and is a strong enough telepath that he can communicate psychically with beings in other dimensions. He's able to project powerful energy blasts, had destroyed planets, and is said to be capable of destroying galaxies at will, which would definitely place him well beyond Omega level. So yeah, that's basically Shumogorath. We don't really know much about him, right? Like, I wish there were more feats for us to discuss, but the character has mostly just been used as kind of like an abstract threat, right? Like this threat that's just kind of looming out there and may or may not return, something along those lines. He's something that's capable of destroying everything, but that's always been thwarted in order to make sure he doesn't get a foothold in reality. But as it is, we don't really know what would happen if Shumogorath's true form were ever realized in the main Marvel Universe. But enough has been said about him by reliable narrators like Doctor Strange and the Ancient One that we can basically be confident in his ability to destroy really like Earth easily, galaxies, and probably conquer the universe if he ever reached his full potential. But let me know what you guys think, right? It's, it's kind of a weird situation. Let me know what you guys think. I wish there was more that we could cover. Uh, but again, Shumagorath is just kind of an ambiguous threat that looms out there. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Core. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like, and I will catch you all later. Peace.